This is a special edition of KTSM 9 News Small Town Spotlight. Hey everyone, good afternoon or good evening. This is KTSM Small Town Spotlight Series continuing again live from Horizon, Texas, uh, made possible by the fine folks over at Charlie Clark Nissan. Now, Horizon is one of the fastest growing communities here in the borderland. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Monica Cortez. And I'm Andy Morgan, and today is marking our sixth installment of mm -hmm. our Small Town Spotlight Series, and for our loyal viewers and maybe people that are just tuning in every wednesday ktsm is live on location mm -hmm. at a different community of course uh last week we were in uh, socorro texas a lot of history there yeah, it was uh, so beautiful a lot of fun that we had there and we're very excited to be in horizon today uh shining a spotlight on this community yeah and so in case you're not familiar with horizon so get this we have a little bit of information the city takes its name from the real estate development uh, corporation that developed as a planned community beginning in the 1960s and then um, that was the horizon corporation yeah, and it really seems like it has just taken off since then it was officially incorporated by referendum in 1988 and that horizon corporation bought up large portions of land in east el paso county selling lots in them with uh, to thousands of people worldwide, often without access to water or utilities. This was between 1962 and 1975. Only one portion of the development was successful. That's the area around the intersection, if you're familiar with it, Horizon Boulevard and Canazzo Street. This became the center of Horizon City, uh, Horizon City the more you know, right? Right, I love that. And you know what, Andy? So, okay, we are at this beautiful golf course. You can kind of see it yep. behind us. It is gorgeous. Andy's been teaching me everything <laughs> about golf. Um, and you know what, okay, earlier this afternoon, I want to say around five, mm -hmm. it was unbearable. It was so hot. Now that breeze feels a little cooler. Definitely <laughs> feeling at least a little sum of that yeah. uh, relief right now. I've been known to s sort of brave some of those triple digit mm -hmm. conditions and go out and play 18 holes today you have? though i have but today <laughs> might have been just a little bit too, too much hot, for me right? it was definitely hot as we are now joined by meteorologist robert bettis robert i'm seriously not so sure i would have been able to get through 18 holes today <laughs> right, <Andy? laughs> of course when you hear that clapping you know it's the small town spotlight and you know that it is the one, the only, Bobby Bone, ladies and gentlemen, of the Charlie Clark Automotive Group. This small town spotlight couldn't happen without this fan, fine man right here and rear hair on the golf course. It is a little warm, but it clouded up, so it feels pretty good right now. Unfortunately, that heat advisory extended all the way through Monday, and we're looking at high temperatures three days in the long-range forecast of 109 degrees. I'm going to have your full forecast, and of course, I'll be clapping with Bobby Bone coming up in just a little bit. Bobby, thank you very much for that. <laughs> we talked a little bit about the mm -hmm. history of Horizon, yep. and we're here at the uh, Horizon Golf Course, and some people may not know it, but this golf course actually has a lot of history associated with it as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, our very own reporter, Tony Davis, got to get a little bit more of that history. Tony, what can you tell us about this golf course? Andy, Monica, this golf course has been a part of Horizon for over 60 years. And with more expansions in the works, they hope that they can attract even more people. Since 1962, Horizon Golf Course has been a major landmark in Horizon City. Not only a beautiful course for those who wish to play, but a tribute to golf legend Lee Trevino. There's actually a big match that, that happened here at, at the golf course where he played Raymond Floyd, which is another Hall of Famer, and they had a big match where a lot of people came out and watched them, and, and, uh, and if anybody knows about this golf course, it, it would be Lee Trevino. Over the course of its history, the golf course has attracted players from around the country thanks to one simple trick, according to Delgadillo. We oversee our golf course, and uh, the only other golf course that oversees is maybe Painted Dunes, but we oversee our, our fairways, our green surrounds, and our tee boxes, and I think we're the only one that does the extensive overseeing uh, to be way green in the wintertime. With the new expansion, Horizon Country Club is not just for its nearby locals, but for everyone across El Paso County. Nice people working here. I think our bar 
and, and restaurant area is also really good. So I think that helps to bring people out here and stay here after they finish playing golf to stay here and drink and, and, uh, and have a burger or any, anything they want to eat. For more on this story, you could find it on our website, ktsm.com. I'm Tony Davis. Back to you all. All right. Tony, thank you very much for that. And uh, something else to note is the uh, Horizon Fire Department. The fire department yeah. hasn't been uh, along or around, I should, for, the, for that long. Uh, just within like the eight, last eight years, it was a uh, volunteer basis. I know that was big and then uh, really taken off here within the last couple years. Absolutely. And although they are fairly new, they've gotten a lot of calls from all over the city, yeah. which I think is fantastic. So let's check out more about the Horizon Fire Department. This station was created about eight years ago. Since then, the call volume has uh, gone up substantially. The community growth has gone up substantially. We have seen uh, over the past several years about 40% of, of the construction happening within our district. We cover a vast area. And so from the time I first joined in 1991, where we're making 300 calls to current, close to 4,000 calls, you can see the need for this station. And we have also since then uh, hired full-time staffing to cover one shift and the other shifts are covered by volunteers, which makes us a combination of both. Well, when I got the opportunity, I just joined, and then from there, I've been building up, trying to rank up. Pride in the department, you know, wearing the uniforms, not just any patch. You're basically here for the community. Very cool to see an inside look at the uh, Horizon Fire Department. Definitely uh, an up and coming, especially within, like I said, like the last really two or three yeah. years has really taken off. And I feel like we have definitely seen some of those situations where we need that extra help mm -hmm. and Horizon Fire Department has definitely been there to uh, aid in that. So I think it's quite fantastic. Yeah, definitely a helping hand. And we have a lot more to uh, cover here from mm -hmm. Horizon, but we certainly want to get to our news of the day back in our studio. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and toss it over to Estela Casas for a look at the news of the day. Yes, away, a lot Steph. happening over here. We'll go back to you in a little bit, but uh, some tragic news to tell you about coming into our newsroom. KTSM has learned the Uber driver who was shot last Friday has died. His family tells us he was taken off life support this afternoon. 52-year-old Daniel Piedra Garcia died after being shot Friday in the head, reportedly by 48-year-old Phoebe Copas from Kentucky, who thought she was being kidnapped and taken into Mexico. Police have confirmed the investigation did not support such claims because the vehicle Piedra Garcia was driving came to a stop on US 54 and nowhere near the border. Meanwhile, Phoebe Copas is currently charged with aggravated assault causing serious bodily injury. That charge will likely be upgraded now that Piedras has died. A pursuit in Las Cruces has resulted in an officer-involved shooting. This just happened a few uh, minutes ago. Police say the driver of the SUV reportedly had warrants out for his arrest and had failed to stop for state police. And that's when the pursuit began and ended a short while later near Holloman Road and Arroyo. An officer with, uh, with the department fired his weapon. The driver was airlifted to a hospital here in El Paso with at least one gunshot wound. No officers were injured during this incident, and this story is still developing. We hope to have more details at 6.30 on 9 News Now. KTSM is learning new details about the murder of Gabriel Martinez near Tom, Tim Foster Park in Far East El Paso. KTSM has obtained court documents that say 17-year-old Zamari Theus and a third suspect, 21-year-old Giovanni Salas, who is not pictured, told Theus's mother on the phone that 17-year-old Anthony Zubia was, quote, tweaking and shooting everywhere at the park. Theus's mother was able to locate her son at Alexis Morris's house, who reportedly sheltered Theus and Zubia. The documents say Mora took them in despite knowing about the shooting. 18-year-old Gabriel Martinez was found shot dead inside a running vehicle that crashed onto a basketball court. And uh, back to Horizon City, uh, we are going to turn our attention to a very special guest, Tony. 
Well, I am here with the newly elected mayor of Horizon, Andres Andy Renteria. Now, Mr. Renteria, we're talking about the growth of Horizon. How we've seen it grow over the past decade, I would say. Why do you think a lot of commercial businesses are coming out here to Horizon? Uh, you know, actually, the, the probably the main reason is because so many people see the opportunity out here in Horizon. Um, the, the city itself has grown exponentially. Um, you know, we're now just over 23,000 people, and businesses are, are starting to take notice. Um, and with that, you know, the, as a, the city, we need to start looking at incentives for those businesses coming into Horizon. We want the growth, we want them to come out, we want them to see exactly what Horizon is about. And you know, this is this is opportunity for them. That's, that's really what it's about. And as mayor, what are some plans that you have to bring more growth into the city? Again, we I wanna review the incentive packages that, that we offer to uh, businesses, small business, large business. Um, again, it's there's opportunity here. We have we have growth out here. There's a, another 4,000 homes that are projected to be built here in the next five to ten years. Um, so the data and and the population supports it. So if they come out, we're willing to in, to give them incentives to to bring their business out here and to uh, allow for employment for our citizens out here. All right, well, thank you so much, Mr. Andrea. We hope we can see a lot of more um, businesses out here for you, but now I'm going to send it right back to you all. Thank you, Tani. You know what? I can't wait to see what kind of businesses do come to El Paso. Maybe a Chick-fil-A. Yeah, he was talking about that. It's Mayor Renteria, and mm -hmm. of course, congratulations being sworn in um, last night. But he mentioned, and we were talking about it in the 5 o'clock hour, just the opportunity yeah. for small businesses to come into this community and really prosper. That's been really cool to see and something that it sounds like we're going to continue to see here in Horizon. Yeah, it's going to be so exciting to see what it's going to look like in a year, two, maybe yeah. even three. Yeah, absolutely. And we have much more to share with you here from Horizon. You're watching KTSM 9 News at 6, Small Town Spot.
Biden being the Borderlands' most trusted name. Your local weather authority, Robert Bettis, the Borderlands' only certified broadcast meteorologist. Oh, I want to tell you right now that the... Uh... The cloud cover just thickened and it's like it dropped five degrees instantly. Welcome to the beautiful golf course out here in Horizon. It is growing quickly, the town of Horizon. Over 23,000 people already. Probably their biggest challenge, growth. And just all the people, all the cars, all the traffic. I tell you what, we're gonna put one more vehicle on the road because my good friend Bobby Bone here from the Charlie Clark Automotive Group. Nice to see you, Charlie. Oh, yes, sir. Nice to see you, Bobby. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, you know, sir. it's been a good cart. It has been a good cart. I like this. Yeah, but it's got a lot of miles on it at it this does. point. You know what I'm it's saying? Time to yell. Oh, yeah. I mean, but I'm uh, I'm fond of it. Oh, yes, me too. But I'm open-minded, too. Oh, yeah. It's hot, and it's going to get hotter. Here's your forecast. Here comes your exclusive nine-hour forecast for Thursday, and temperatures are going up. 107 our high temperature in the afternoon a heat advisory in effect those winds will pick up and gust to 25 miles per hour the heat advisory has expanded to cover the entire borderland excluding the very upper elevations that lasts all the way through monday evening in anticipation of the extremely hot weekend high temperatures so far today 106 watts 103 el paso 100 deming 102 alabagordo and 102 in las cruces We'll see partly cloudy skies overnight tonight, and yes, those winds will slowly die down. They'll be gusting to close to 30 miles per hour until then. In your allergy forecast, the pollen count 5.7 on Friday, 5.4 on Saturday. Here are your high temperatures tomorrow. 104 Alabagordo, 103 Deming, 108 Juarez, 106 for Van Horn, 102 at the pass. 71 low temperature for Las Cruces tonight with partly cloudy skies tomorrow. 104 and a heat advisory in effect. 79 low temperature at the International Airport tonight. Winds dying down. 107 and partly cloudy skies tomorrow as those winds pick up again. Only KTSM gives you nine full days of weather. 106 on Friday. 108 both Saturday and Sunday. 109 degrees for Monday and Tuesday. Slightly cooler Wednesday and Thursday. Back to 109 on Friday. Okay, well, not only do we have Bobby Bone from Charlie Clark Automotive, the brand new mayor of Horizon, Andy Renteria. Nice to see you, Andy. How are you? I'm good. You know, Bobby was saying maybe it's time for me to trade in the cart. What do you think? I think it's time. All right, Bobby, what you got over here? It's the Infinity QX80. Oh. This is an amazing vehicle. Oh. It's going to be a luxurious. It's going to put you in style. Well, we it's, have the, the, it's the same color as my old yes, car. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We oh. have this. This is a beautiful color, too. Oh, I love this it. Infinity QX80. Oh. Come on up. Oh, yeah. Feel the leather. Feel oh. the leather. And it's got AC. Oh, yes. Yes. You know what? These small town spotlights wouldn't happen without Charlie Clark Automotive Group, so we thank them so much because it's so fun to come out and do some good news in these wonderful small towns. More KTSM 9 News in just a moment.
Avoid collisions, construction, and obstructions daily with KTSM real-time traffic. And now, KTSM Nine Sports with Colin Deaver. Sponsored by Glasheen, Byers, and Enderman Injury Lawyers. Welcome back to KTSM Small Town Spotlight. We're in Horizon City today at the Horizon Golf Course, a beautiful place where Eastsiders come to play golf all the time. Horizon High School saw some pretty awesome athletic feats this year. Of course, Ricardo Leva getting a scholarship to North Texas. He won the silver medal in the high jump competition at the UIL State Track and Field Competition. The baseball team, the Scorpions, advancing to the area round of the baseball playoffs. But a few years ago, Paolo Melendez was the first one to blaze a trail for athletes at Horizon High School as he became the first athlete at Horizon to make it to the Division One level for football. He then went on to get back to the community as a coach at Horizon High School as well as at Eastlake High School, Sam Guzman has his full story. Uh, give me a lot of confidence in the the game. Paulo Melendez is a pioneer in the sport of football at Horizon High School. As far as uh, Division One athletes goes for Horizon High School, there's been several uh, before me, but in the sport of football, I, I was the first one. After high school, Melendez went on to play at UTEP in the early 2010s. During his time at UTEP as a member of the offensive line, Melendez played on some great teams and alongside some great players. We go through some rocky years, but we were able to bring it back and finish my senior year in 2014 uh, in a bowl game appearance against Utah State. And uh, you see the likes of Aaron Jones and Hernandez and, and Nick Needham and uh, Eric Tomlinson. After UTEP, Melendez began his high school coaching career. In 2017, Melendez got the chance to return to his alma mater as a head coach. I was 24 when I was uh, appointed the head coach at Horizon High School, and man, they took a chance on me. Melendez would lead the Scorpions to success winning back-to-back by-district -back titles in 2020 and 2021. It meant the world to me. It's an experience that I wouldn't trade for, for anything. I grew so much from that role. I sleep at night really, really well, knowing that I did my very, very best in trying to turn that program around and some very fun times there. Today, Melendez still coaches in the Horizon area, now just at East Lake High, continuing to help the next generation of ballplayers. The kid that you see at Horizon High School and the kid you see at East Lake High School, you know, you draw a lot of similarities. And they're kids from the same community, and I'm very, very proud to be able to say that I've coached that at both places. Now here at my second year here at East Lake High School, taking more of a hands-on role with the offensive line. Being a former Division One athlete, I think he opens up those eyes and opportunities for the kids in our program to see, hey, somebody in our community he did it. Um, definitely an opportunity for, for somebody in our program to do the same. Sam Guzman, KTSM 9 Sports. Thank you, Sam. Melendez's East Eastlake team will be busy this week. The Falcons are headed back to the Texas State 7-on-7 football tournament for a third year in a row. Joining them in Kyle Station will be Eastwood. The Troopers qualified for their fourth consecutive 7-on-7 tournament. Both of them are in the Division I bracket, and they'll get big tests. 7-on-7 is a great way for the Falcons and Troopers to see what they've got ahead of the 2023 regular season. It's a really good feeling, you know, we try to keep the tradition going every single year, you know. When the seniors left last year, they said, make sure you guys get back there this year, and, you know, that's what we did. We're going to be playing, like, really, really good competition out there, you know, uh, maybe get us more confident and better, face good competition out there, you know, when we come back here, you know, we'll be more prepared. Going against those guys down there, like, football is live for them and football is live for us, but they just play a little bit differently than us and a little bit more competition, and it really helps us when we come back home and it proves that we're all, not El Paso Eastwood, but we're Eastwood and we play the same level of football as they do. Eastlake is in Pool M with Katie Tompkins, Red Oak, and Austin Westlake. Eastwood is in Pool N with Lake Travis, Shadow Creek, and Frisco Wakeland. They'll both be in action Friday and Saturday at State 7-on-7 Seven Seven to the track where UTEP swept the Conference USA Male and Female Track Athletes of the Year Awards today. Steeplechaser Victor Kibiego won on the men's side after a bronze medal at the NCAA Championships and First Team All-American Honors. Meanwhile, hurdler Marissa Simpson won the award on the ladies' side after an NCAA semifinal appearance in the 100-meter hurdles and a second team All-American selection. They're the first minors to sweep the awards since 2017 when Toby Amosan and Emmanuel Career did it. Let's go to the Diamond, former New Mexico State interim baseball coach Keith Zuniga is headed to Hawaii to be the Rainbow Warriors pitching coach, according to reports. Zuniga took over when Mike Kirby, Kirby was fired early in the 2023 season and finished it out. He was a finalist for that gig, but NMSU ended up hiring Oregon pitching coach Jake Angier. And finally, the El Paso Chihuahuas back in action tonight at home versus the Tacoma Rainiers. El Paso took the first game of the series last night on a walk-off double by Taylor Colway in the bottom of the ninth inning. First pitch just a couple minutes at 635. We'll have some Highlights for you at 10 on KTSM. Monica, Andy, back to you.
Thank you so much, Colin. Well, it truly has been so much fun out here in Horizon. We even got to try the food yep. at Moonline Bar and Grill. Had some uh, nachos, mm -hmm. had some wings, wings uh, something almost like a fried like potato a, or something like good. that. It was actually really good. I'm not exactly <laughs> sure what it was. It had some cheese too Ooh. in it. It was really, really good. So Come a lot try of fun it out, guys. There. Yeah, absolutely. We had a lot of fun here bringing you the uh, Small Town Spotlight Series live from Horizon, Texas. Make sure you tune in next week when we're going to be in... Benton? Anthony. Anthony. That's we're right. going to Anthony. We're making it. There I think after go. that is Benton. Benton. So, all right. Making our way across here at the borderland. And that's going to do it for us. KTSM 9 News Now with Estella Casas is coming up next. We'll see you. Bye. Hair, makeup, and men's grooming sponsored by...